All right, hello everyone. I know that this is a little unorthodox. It's a little atypical and weird for me too, but uh, we are flipping the classroom today. And so uh, I am coming to you via video, uh, talking to you about realism. We just wrapped up our romanticism part of the literary movements unit. And so now we're moving forward to a uh, a movement that really formed as a reaction against romanticism, realism. And so we'll talk again about the historical and cultural context that really shaped this movement and informed the texts that were written during this time period. So you should have your lecture notes out at this point. You have blanks that you'll need to fill in as I read through the packet. Uh, and I will be elaborating on certain points as I go, and so feel free to take notes as I sort of expand upon what is written as well. So, as we know, Romanticism was a reaction to uh, the Enlightenment, a reaction against the Enlightenment, the Age of Reason, and Neoclassicism. And so Romantics valued things like um, the individualism within society and uh, nonconformity, and they found tranquility, serenity, and spirituality in nature. Uh, they, they cherished the sublime, uh, and they believed in imagination and freedom of, expression, freedom of expression and things like that. And so we know that in the text we studied um, in um, Artist of the Beautiful in Bartleby the Scrivener and Hat Fall of the House of Usher, we saw sort of the spectrum of Romanticism and just how much that literary movement uh, represented in terms of its subject matter and themes. We're gonna we're gonna go into a a simpler movement, if you will. Realism is a lot more straightforward. Romanticism was extremely complex, and realism really is very. I hesitate to say simple, but it is a lot more cut and dry, and, and actually kind of easier to identify the elements of this movement within the text that we read. Okay, so what is realism? Uh, first of all, realism is occurring uh, after the Civil War ends, right? And so the Civil War uh, took place from 1861 to 1865, and realism um, spans approximately from 1860 to the 19 to 1900 uh, and remember movements are fluid and so their origin and their end dates are typically kind of hard to define but those are the estimates of this period and so we've got the civil war just ended and so you're looking at um, an agrarian society in the south trying to figure out how they're going to survive economically um, you've got kind of uh, post-friction sentiment in the United States before the Civil War. Uh, we were uh, a brand new nation, we were coming into our identity as a country, we were um, sort of thriving, and, and uh, a lot of the wealth in the upper class left room for leisure and, and time to read romantic works. Well now, uh, what we're seeing is a dramatic and drastic change in society, especially in terms of the middle class. And so, Thus, we have the birth of realism. Um, and remember that the Industrial Revolution is occurring at this time as well. Now, the second wave, what's known as the second wave of the Industrial Revolution, is occurring at this time. And so, you're seeing an, a, an increase in the steel industry, um, mass production, um, giant corporations are expanding. Um, there's more material available to more people quickly. And so all of these things tend to influence uh, the movement that sprung out of this time period. Okay, so I'm going a little off course. Uh, what is it? In realism, you'll often see writing that presents a careful description of everyday life, usually of the middle classes. Character is the primary literary element. Whereas in realism, plot was and uh, romanticism, sorry, plot was important. So in realism, we see a much greater emphasis on character, on dynamic characters, round characters, changing, evolving characters. 
The focus is on the ordinary, familiar, or the mundane, and subject matter is represented in a straightforward or matter-of-fact manner that is presumed to reflect life as it actually is, without embellishment or any romanticizing. It's considered to be the faithful representation of reality, or verisimilitude. Okay, this is a hard word. I'll spell it for you. Verisimilitude. It's spelled V-E-R... I-S-I-M-I-L-I-T-U-D-E. Verisimilitude. The prefix very meaning true, so truthful, and then similitude sort of like uh, replica or sameness, and so true replication. Realism is an accurate or true representation of reality in many senses. Um, it is also referred to as um, the accurate, detailed, unembellished de depiction of, of nature or contemporary life, and this is implied both within its style and its subject matter. So where does realism get its roots? I, I sort of touched on this already, um, but realism is a reaction against romanticism, which is really important to note. Uh, where romantics transcend the immediate to find the ideal, especially in the sense of Owen Warland, right, in The Artist of the Beautiful, Realists center their attention to a remarkable degree on the immediate, the here and now, the specific action, and the verifiable consequence. Realists focus on the need to explain the rapid changes occurring in their world. They sort of write as a strategy for imagining and managing social change. So, because society is so rapidly changing during this time period, realists are charged with the task of writing uh, the characters in their story represent those rapid changes in society, but within their characters. So in the three pieces that we're going to study, we will definitely see the way that the characters evolve, especially women. And we'll discuss how those characters are representative of the changing uh, times and change, changes in society. So historically, socially, culturally, what's going on? I, again, post-Civil War America, there is um, a, slavery is abolished. There's a rapid growth of industrialization and urbanization. Um, so much like with romanticism, uh, as I said, you know, there was urbanization. People were moving to cities. Now it's even more so prominent. And so there's an explosion of this happening now. There's the uh, advent of mass production. Things are being mass produced. Uh, there's an expanding population. Immigration is um, seeing a spike. And so more people are moving into the country, into cities. Um, more people are immigrating. There's a rise in middle class affluence. Um, and sometimes the middle class is referred to as the bourgeois. Right. Um, and so the, the rise in middle class affluence means that now middle class people are able to send their children to school, are able to afford to live more comfortably. And so now it's no longer just the rich who is reading literature, but it's also the middle class. Uh, there's an increase in literacy because of that. There's an increase, especially in women, reading. Um, and so in summation, realism appealed to readers who were interested in learning about their quickly changing society and culture. So if you had an interest in kind of holding a mirror up to society at the time and, and observing the rapid changes, you would want to read realist literature. Um, style can be categorized pretty simply, I would say, for realist writing. Um, it tends to closely render reality in comprehensive and accurate detail, even at the expense of plot. Um, again, plot's not really that important, so if you're someone who's interested in reading for plot, realism might not interest you, because it has more to do with the subtleties and nuances of character changes. Uh, characters appear in realist text in their real complexity of temperament and motive, so they are round and dynamic. Uh, they're shown through the explicable relation to nature, each other, social class, and their past. Um, plot is pl plausible, it's very reasonable, 
um, avoiding it plots avoid the sensational dramatic elements of romanticism which is a huge distinguishment between the two movements um, diction is natural I would say the word here I have is natural vernacular. You can just put natural. Uh, diction is natural, which means it's not heightened or poetic, right? It may it may have the tone of satire and be, maybe comic, um, but it's always matter of fact. Um, there's a lot of objectivity, unbiased representation, and objective narration. So I hope that you're seeing the main differences between already between realism and romanticism. In terms of subject matter and theme, we also see a lot of great differences. So, uh, in realism, the writing is centered on the immediate, the here and now, the specific action, and the ver verifiable consequence, again. So, that being said, um, and you have a second quote down there too, uh, where it says, Realism sets itself at work to consider characters and events which are apparently the most ordinary and uninteresting in order to extract from these their full value and true meaning. So, ordinary people, but you can still get a lot of psychology and a lot of, a lot of stuff from these characters. It would apprehend in all particulars the connection between the familiar and the extraordinary and the seen and unseen of human nature. So, uh, subject matter and themes that are prominent in realist texts are the representation of middle class life, obviously. The intended audience was emerging middle class readers. Um, you would see social position and class, commentary on social position and class, socioeconomic contrast between classes. You'll see, you'll see a lot of this. Um, recognize, uh, realist writers tend to recognize the flawed nature of the real world. You know, maybe you've heard the phrase like, well, in reality, this is how it is. Um, and so realists are concerned with portraying reality in its full complexity flawed nature included. Um, you'll see realist writers focusing on complex ethical choices because that's something that all human beings have to deal with on a daily basis pretty much. Um, and so you'll see that portrayed in their writing as well. Additionally, you'll see a lot of writers tend to focus on the transition from childhood to adulthood, which is another thing that everyone can relate to. Um, you'll see portrayal of the dynamics of family life and you'll see the idea that humans can control their destinies. Characters in realist writings often act on their environment rather than simply reacting to it, which is a little existential. Um, and so you see some of that color as well. Next, uh, <laughs> next note in your, in your packet is this idea of local color. And so <coughs> here I say that regionalists like Mark Twain began writing around this time to illustrate the variety in America and the lives of people. Regionalists, people living locally, in the place, connected to the people, culturally sound, right? So Americans wanted to know what their vast country looked like and how many different peoples, li pe peoples lived and talked. Um, so you get a taste of that because of the regionalist writers who are representing their region uh, across, across the country. Um, so that's a, an interesting note. Some authors that are included within the realism movement um, include the following but are not limited to the following. Mark Twain, Henry James, Edith Wharton, Kate Chopin, William Dean Howells, uh, Bret Hart, and Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Uh, three of whom we will study during our, our textual analysis of, our, of the realism movement. Uh, an important thing to note is how romantics, realists, and naturalists see the human being, right? So in each movement, the way that the writers see the individual says a lot about the way the movement is characteristically defined. For example, romantics see the individual as a god, okay? Man is born naturally good, divine right? Born with divinity. Realists, however, see the individual as simply a person. You're a human and you're flawed, right? The full complexity of the human experience is within you. You're simply a person. Naturalists, which we'll get to next, see the individual as a helpless object because by that point, 
the Industrial Revolution has continued and, and blasted <laughs> so significantly that at that point, really human beings have are seen by these writers during the naturalist period as just cogs in the machine, uh, just another link in the chain. And so naturalists view the individual as a helpless object. And so I hope that you're able to kind of understand that the main differences, I would say, between realism and romanticism so far that you can notice are that realism really tries to capture reality in, in the truest sense of the word. So things are changing in America. A lot of changes are happening. Um, I forgot to mention that women's suffrage doesn't actually, the amend, 19th Amendment doesn't happen until 1920. The, uh, the movement was really started in 1848, um, but women's suffrage is on its way. And so women are gaining the right to vote slowly, but they are becoming a more prominent or they're assuming a more prominent role in society than ever before. And so women are, are, women's role in society is changing. And so in summation, kind of, um, realist writers are trying to capture the changes of the times. And they're doing that by representing their characters in very dynamic ways. We'll talk more about this in class after you read a story, The Story of an Hour. It's a short piece but it's excellent. I hope you enjoy it. And then we'll talk about realist subject matter, theme, and style as of after you read that piece. I hope you enjoyed this virtual lecture. <laughs> I'll see you all soon, and I hope you have an excellent weekend. Take care.